the Maryville Town Council for Tuesday, March 26th, 2024, 6.30 p.m. Our flags are at the community center for a different event, and so we're going to display this for our pledge tonight. So please enjoy this in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Please remain standing for our invocation. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we give you thanks for uh, the opportunity that we have to gather here this evening. We're thankful for the community in which we live and have the opportunity to serve. We ask for your blessing upon all those who um, give of themselves to make this community a better place. We pray that harmony and peace would reign among us that the deliberations done here tonight will be in accord with your will and for the benefit of all concerned. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you all. Madam Clerk Treasurer, would you call the roll call, please? Vice President Neal. Here. Councilwoman Haynes Edwards. Here. Councilwoman Chandler Belton. Here. Councilwoman Uzalak. Here. Councilman Pettit. Here. Councilwoman Hardaway. Here. President Bella. Here. Seven present. Very good, thank you. Moving on tonight to petitions, communications, acknowledgments, and remonstrations. I do have an appointment this evening. This an appointment will be for the shared ethics entity. Um, through Article 3 of the Shared Ethics Interlocal Cooperation Agreement, uh, and this day, a 26th day of March 2024, in the town of Maryville, I'd like to appoint Keisha Hardaway to be our duly appointed appointee to the Shared Ethics Entity Joint Board of Delegates. We have a signed document here that I'll ask the clerk treasurer to attest. Thank you for serving. Thank you, Mr. President. We also received a uh, encouraging letter from the principal of Andrean High School. I'd like to call on Councillor Hardaway to read this into the record. She happens to be um, in that district where Andrean High School is located. Ms. Hardaway. Good evening. On March 25th, 2024, the, for, to, to the Andrean family, over the past eight years, Andrean High School has been ardently studying and exploring how to strengthen and ensure the strategic future of our school to maintain its position as a beacon of faith, learning, leadership, and service for the people of the Diocese of Gary and Northwest Indiana. One of the key drivers of the study was an assessment of the physical campus and need for the future. Several respected individuals have worked diligently to understand and assess the many factors, perspectives, trends, trade-offs, programming, donor capacity, and tactile needs of what would be required to influence the desired future for Andrean and our ability to live <laughs> out our mission. After several years of silent campaigning and measuring anticipated benchmarks, a committee was formed this fall to offer a final recommendation on the future of our physical campus to myself and our superintendent of schools. <laughs> the fruit of the committee's wisdom proposed that we invest in our current campus in a practical phased manner that properly honors the tradition of our past and the needs of our future through potential renovation, new on-site construction, and or redevelopment. Appreciative of their work and perspective, I accepted their recommendation and presented the findings to Bishop McClory earlier this month. He has since affirmed this and bestowed his full endorsement of the recommendation. The Andrean Initiative reflects a big dream. 
With this more defined direction, there is excitement to move forward at our current campus to ensure students continued success, but in a campus setting they have long deserved. We stand at an important crossroads posed to influence a vibrant future for our diocese in the Northwest Indiana region. Andrean is an essential component and valuable asset of the future. Toward this goal, we will continue to dedicate focused energy to strengthening our partnership with the town of Maryville, local universities, philanthropic organizations, and our devoted and loyal alumni base. We envision a future where Andrean remains an honored assessed asset and beacon to our region. For this is what we have been, what we are, and what we believe our mission will continue to be into the next generation. Our energies, resources, and goals should reflect this awesome call and important, and important responsibility. As a product of this institution, I have a deep appreciation for our history, and our mission. Even more so, I, am, I have an abiding faith in Andrea's future success and know that her best days are still ahead. Christ is my teacher, Jacob Knazer, principal at Andrea High School. Thank you, Ms. Hardaway. Council, we'll have the RDC and the town council talk more about how we can assist Andrea in their endeavors for remodeling and new construction uh, with the coming months. Ms. President, Mr. President. Uh, as, a, as a fellow Andrean parent like Councilor Hardaway, um, and I told the press this when this came out, uh, this was on my platform when I ran for re-election last year. It was on my platform four years ago when the previous Bishop Hine had a study commissioned and they thought they were going to move south where the Franciscan Hospital is on I-65. And I think, Mr. President, you can attest, I told Mr. Knazer to his face, uh, Andrean's not leaving Maryville over my dead body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, as, a, as a graduate, my daughter just graduated. Uh, I know Keisha's boys have graduated. Um, it is a big shot in the arm for the north side of Maryville. Um, so it's very good news this day. And we will sit down as an RDC, ladies. Uh, this will be an agenda item for a workshop uh, to discuss our initiatives to try and help out Andrean. Well, very good. Thank you, Mr. Pettit. Uh, the last item here under communication is a, a letter from the Arbor Day Foundation. On behalf of the Arbor Day Foundation, I'm thrilled to congratulate Merrillville on earning recognition as a 2023 Tree City USA and receiving a growth award. Thank you for taking pride in your community by planting, nurturing, and celebrating trees. So we have won again. This is the 14th year in a row. So hats off to everybody involved, and we'll keep that going for sure. All right. We have no uh, public hearings this evening, do we? I don't believe no. so, Joe. Yep. <coughs> Moving on to the consent agenda tonight, we have the accounts Mr. payable. Oh, I sorry. beg your pardon. We do have an employee we wish to recognize tonight, please. Oh, very good. I apologize. I no apology necessary. You allowed me to still do it. <laughs> Absolutely. You. Want to join me, sir? Sure. Hello everyone, I am Michael Griffin, the Interim Town Manager of the Town of Merrillville, and I am joined by uh, my esteemed colleague Steve King, who is the Director of Streets and Engineering for the Town of Merrillville, and we're going to recognize one of the employees within his department, Brenda Michi. So Ms. Michi, will you come forward please? How are you? I'm good. Congratulations Thank on you. this recognition. Thank you. I think that the Council and <laughs> and forming these recognitions does a really great service. I commend you for it. Um, we know that there's no job that we undertake in serving the people of Maryville that doesn't require every hand we can get, every able hand. But Miss Michi is special for this month. <laughs> she is special in this way. A long, 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 okay. multiply it, time ago, I served as an intern for the late Adam Benjamin. Some of you will remember he was a member of Congress that represented the 1st District. That tells you how long ago this was. I was much younger then. 
I remember that he used to get a persistent letter all the time from a constituent that I had to prepare the response for. I was kind of proud of that, but I got a chance to write back pretty soon, early in my internship. And this man was particularly grouchy and never had a good word to say about the congressman. And I knew this guy was a very friendly to the congressman, and I was convinced he would never vote for him. So it was a pattern or a practice at that time that he would allow interns to have lunch with him in the official dining room, which was so cool. Sometimes ask me about that. <laughs> and during that lunch, he allowed the interns to ask <clears throat> questions. And one of the questions I asked him was, is, Congressman Benjamin, why do you have us respond to even these constituents? This guy doesn't like you. He's going to continually ride you. He, mo he writes you every month with some new grievance, and why do you do it? And here's what he said to me. Now, I don't know if this is original with him, but it's the first time I ever heard it, mm -hmm. and I've tried to practice this in my own life of public service. He said, the people of the first district only get one member of Congress at a time, so I believe I have to serve everybody in that district, not just the people who like me, but sometimes the people who don't like me, and definitely the people who can't vote for me because I care about the children too. It makes me cry sometimes when I think about that, mm -hmm. for him to say that to me. And then there's Brenda Meach. We only get one of her at a time. Right. <laughs> and we're so lucky that we have the one that we have. And even though sometimes she probably loves the people she serves, she always loves serving you people of Maryville. There may be days when she's not so happy serving with me, but she never lets me know because she believes we only get one Brenda Michi at a time. And so she has to serve all of us. And so well she does it. And now I'm going to recognize the director of streets and engineering who has some words to say about her. <laughs> so Brenda served with our department since <clears throat> June 17th of 2019. She's a pleasure to work with, and we truly be lost without her. She streamlined her office operations and con continues to make improvements every day. She also works closely with town administration when it comes to town events, uh, Fourth of July parade, um, job fair. Um, the Christmas celebration we do, she's heavily involved uh, with Linda when it comes to that, and we appreciate it. Um, she treats everybody in the Department with kindness and compassion, and she's excellent at what she does. Um, couldn't ask for a better person to work with. Um, so thank you for everything you do. Thank you. All right. Well, well, very well deserved. Of our appreciation. Thank you so much for your example and the service you rendered to the people of Maryville by helping us serve them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Griffin and Mr. King. Moving on tonight to the consent agenda, we have the accounts payable register voucher approval for March 26th the AP register summary for ARP purchases for March 26th, and the approval of the Town Council meeting minutes of March 12th. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Pettit, second by Mrs. Neal for approval of the consent agenda. <coughs> Questions or comments on the motion? President Bella. Yes, ma'am. Clerk Treasurer Eric January would like the council to know that he did give a separate accounts <coughs> register voucher for RDC. Great. Thank you. And also, we should explain uh, Eric's absence tonight. <coughs> An old injury has resurfaced, and he's uh, out for the next week or two dealing with that. Any other discussion on the consent agenda motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on tonight to standing committees, budget and finance, Mrs. Neal. No report, President Ballo. Thank you. Council Affairs, Mr. Pettit. Yes, Mr. President, we had a uh, council workshop last Wednesday discussing um, code enforcement, and I know uh, Councilor uh, Haynes Edwards is going to uh, talk about that under blight. Uh, at this time, Mr. President, I'd like to call a Council Affairs Committee meeting for 5 o'clock on Tuesday, April 2nd. Um, we met with Attorney uh, Ricardo. Uh, he's got about six or seven ordinances he and Joe are working on, and I know uh, the fire chief and police chief uh, have an interest in a couple of those. 
so the committee will review those briefly, and then we'll make a recommendation that you place those on the agenda for the 9th. So that'll good. be Tuesday the 2nd at 5. Uh, Shauna, your meeting is 5.30, right? 5.30. Okay, that should be, half an hour should be enough time. <clears throat> Thank you. Street Department, Mrs. Uzlak. Yes, um, the Street Department is still picking up branches and debris and whatever they can get to, and I guess that's about it for now. Thank you. I think any branches and debris that were out there today are probably in Gary by now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, with that crazy wind yeah, that we windy, had. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Elections, public relations, and town beautification, Councillor Neal. Thank you, President Bella. <clears throat> uh, we are still working on our flowers for the town beautification. Um, I'm working with uh, Steve and Tracy on that, and I will be calling a meeting with Robinson Engineers so that we can move forward with uh, getting our new town slogan, uh, town signs with our new town slogan. Very good. And that's all. Thank you. Steve, do we still have the old um, designs that we had reviewed a while back? Uh, yeah, I have got it on file okay. uh, in the computer. I've got it. Would you mind sending those out to the council so we can refresh our memories on what those sure. look like? Mm -hmm. Yep. That'd be great. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Neal? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Environmental Affairs, Mr. Pettit. Uh, Mr. President, I don't have anything. I know Councillor Neal went to the first Lake County Solid Waste. Do you have any update, Rhonda, on anything? Uh, yeah, I have lots of them. I was going to give it one. Uh, under okay, the under board. that committee? Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. I have nothing more than Mr. President. Did you want to run the rest of the meeting? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, personnel Policy and Employee Benefits, Ms. Hardaway. Ooh, okay, mm -hmm. so we are still in the search for a parks director. Um, the person that we extended the offer to took some time to think about it and <laughs> has um, respectfully declined our offer. So we are back. It has been posted. We are also posting simultaneously for the assistant parks director position as well. Um, and then there are several job postings for the community center, front desk attendants, as well as site supervisors. That is all for my personnel uh, report. I guess I could go to public safety. Please do. Thank you. As long as Mr. Pettit's okay with it. Are you, okay? Are you running? <laughs> Who's running? You've lost control already, Bella. No, because he always tells me I need to keep going. So I'm just fluid. If I could have Chief Yerga please step to the podium to talk about, uh, oh, or sit there. You already have a microphone. Sorry, I missed that. Hi, Chief Yerga. Hi. Please talk about the uh, aerial purchase, please. Sure. Uh, so we're here tonight to uh, petition the council to sign into a contract with Pierce Manufacturing. Uh, the fire territory has gone through the bid process. Uh, Pierce Manufacturing was the only bidder. Um, the cost is 2.6 million and some change. Um, the Fire Territory Board is entering into a 2024 bond to pay for other <laughs> projects that we simply can't afford to pay for the truck. Uh, this truck will be replacing a truck that the council purchased in 1993, and it's been out of service for 10 years. Um, we rely on mutual aid now currently when we need a large aerial platform, uh, so it's, it's sorely needed. It's been overdue for quite some time. But with the Fire Territory's inception, 12 years ago, we had other projects we had to take care of prior to this purchase. Um, so the contract, we've been kind of going back and forth. It's, like, it's kind of confusing. It shows that, uh, well, first of all, let me state that we need you to sign the contract as soon as possible. The build time for fire trucks these days uh, are between 45 and 48 months. If you guys, some of the council members back in 2013 when we purchased fire trucks, it was 9 to 12 months. And we can thank COVID and we can thank the uh, shortage of, um, you know, supply shortage and, and manpower shortage for all that stuff. And that's industry-wide. That's not just with this one manufacturer. Uh, so it's important to get this contract signed as quickly as possible, <coughs> get on the clock. Uh, no money is uh, required until the time of delivery in 45 to 48 months. Um, so I figured creatively we could figure out a way to finance this in four years. Um, there was um, a prepaid discount that the Fire Territory Board and our professionals looked at. Uh, for our bond, it's looking at around 4.5%. Uh, and to finance, if we, tr we tried to include this purchase in our bond, 
with that, uh, our professionals quickly told us that stop looking at the discount because the amount it's costing you to finance this, it, it's going to be a wash. It looks great on paper, um, but it, it's, not, it's not, even if it could work, and thanks to Mr. Mr. Griffin, uh, I didn't realize that the state law had changed and we could only have put down 50% if we had the funds. Um, so with that, um, <clears throat> we would ask that you would enter the contract as soon as possible and then we could work together to figure out a way to finance this thing. <coughs> Thank you, Chief Yarger. Mm -hmm. President Bella, I make a motion to uh, sign the contract for the new aerial. Second. Uh, Ms. Hardwick, would you mind amending your motion to simply state authorizing the town council president to sign uh, the contract with uh, Pierce Manufacturing? I amend my motion. Mr. Pettit. Second. Stands. Second stands. Okay, thanks. And like Chief said, we'll, uh, between now and then, we'll figure a way to pay for this. Right, Mr. Griffin? <clears throat> Mr. President, we will, and we're going to pretend that there's a bond issue so you can make this obligation beforehand. Otherwise, everything's good. Mr. Bill, I have one more thing. Uh, you know what? Would you mind waiting until we sure. vote? I'm oh, sorry. <clears throat> Unless it's part of this conversation. It is part of this conversation. Please it's relevant. Um, with the, uh, the contract, since it's a unique situation where it's four <clears throat> years out for delivery, there will be some change orders. <clears throat> Uh, obviously, technology is going to change in four years. I'm not saying it's going to go up. It might go down. But they did escalate the price to account for what their best forecast could be for technology and for increasing costs. So I just want the council to know that that number on that contract, it's going to be with a little bit of latitude because uh, it could change in four years. And I, I, I think that's pretty reasonable. But we're not talking millions of dollars worth of changes. You know, it'd be, you know, maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars. For sure. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the council? <clears throat> Hearing none, it's uh, $2.6 million. I think I'd like a roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk Treasurer. Vice President <clears throat> Neal? Yes. Councilwoman Haynes Edwards? Aye. Councilwoman Chandler Felton? Aye. Councilwoman Uselak? Yes. Councilman <clears throat> Pettit? Yes. Councilwoman Hartley? Aye. President Della. Aye. Seven in favor. Seven in favor. Motion carries. Mr. Griffin, would you um, get together with me tonight? We'll get yes. that signed. I will do that. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. And thank you, firefighters. I see most of you are here, or if not all of you, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you for all that you do and use this new equi equipment wisely <clears throat> and safely. Anything else under public safety? No, Council. No, President Bella. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Economic development, Mr. Pettit. Well, ironically, Mr. President, we had a redevelopment commission meeting, a workshop, and a uh, public meeting. <clears throat> and at the workshop, we heard a presentation from Light Source BP that wants to develop a solar farm out on Colorado. And thinking of you, Chief Yerga, I immediately asked them, uh, like others have done, and and I know we bought the radios. Uh, these bigger developers. Uh, helping us out with different types of equipment, uh, like the aerial. They will look into that, and you, you have my word. We'll, we'll pursue that with them. Um, same thing goes for, for Chief Nusis. Uh, if there's equipment needs and these developers are coming in and asking for tax incentives, uh, I think it behooves us as a council and a, and a committee to make that request of those developers. So uh, we will continue to do that. Uh, again, Mr. President, Light Source BP is going to be making approximately a $100 million investment um, with approximately 40, 446 acres that they are securing uh, out in the Panhandle on both sides of Colorado Street. Uh, they were granted a use variance by the, the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Town Council last year. Uh, and so they will be moving forward, uh, working with myself and, and Ms. Chilcott and Mr. Griffin uh, on an incentive package. And uh, Joe will be working on an economic development agreement for that contribution, Chief. So. Uh, another large development that is uh, community oriented and, and helping us out. So look forward to them coming out there. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to parks and recreation, Mrs. Uzlak. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I have a couple of residents calling me now wanting to book their birthday parties in our <clears throat> local parks, <clears throat> which I usually do have. And I'm sure the fire department, they bring out a fire truck for the children and they get to walk through it and they enjoy it. At this time, that's all I have to report. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Utility liaison, 
Ms. Chandler Felton. This time we're still trying to make arrangements to um, meet with the different parties, so there's no report at this time. Very good, thank you. Moving on to abandoned and blighted properties, <coughs> Ms. Haynes Edwards. <coughs> Mr. President, um, we met last week um, and discussed the different um, ways and theories of how we can improve um, the abandoned blighted properties. Um, it was agreed upon that we began to take some aggressive actions, and so I was able to go to my first court appearance for that. Um, Mr. Uh, Councilor Pettit and I were there. Um, I've also gone to on a tour, starting a tour with Tiffany and myself on the different places that are abandoned or and or blighted. And so we're just moving in the right direction. With, uh, our interim town manager, Mr. Griffin, and I are still going to meet with other um, people to see how we can continue to make this committee grow. Did I hear correctly that we've actually started the process of um, dem demolition on a, a home that's in Marigold, gonna, that's yeah. eyesore? Yes, so we did get a um, a motion in place. Well, we have a, date, a court date to move forward. Um, a, hear a, he a hearing. A hearing date. A hearing to move forward to proceed on the demolition process a of a home that has been an eyesore for mm -hmm. quite some time now. And it's actually dangerous, right? It's actually dangerous, Safety yes. Issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Oh, shall I go on? Mr. Yes, you're the <laughs> same as Ms. Hardaway, yeah. Uh, no report at this time. But you have to say the name of your oh, committee. Oh, the committee semi quincentennial committee. Very good. Uh, <laughs> I have no report, Mr. President. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving on tonight to town, uh, special town projects. Our chairperson is Councillor Neal. Thank you, President Bella. We are preparing for our Juneteenth um, movie night at the Dean and Barbara Community Center. It's going to um, st uh, start approximately uh, probably about 8 p.m. in the evening time. <clears throat> um, and that's what we decided we we're going to do for our Juneteenth celebration. So we're looking forward to that. We'll have concessions. We'll have two separate movies um, and some other things, activities also going on. We are also in a process of planning for our 4th of July parade. Um, and for that, July 3rd is our July, uh, 4th of July fireworks, which will be held at Maryville High School. And on July 4th is our 4th of July parade, which will start at 11 a.m. at the Barbara and Dean Community Center. The applications for people who want to participate in a parade, you can find them online. This is what they kind of look like and it gives you the information and also the flyer about the 4th of July parade. So we're really looking for a lot of participation this year um, with that parade. And that's all I have for, for now. Mr. President, Mr. to Mr. Councilor Pettit. Neal, Rhonda, do you want uh, for the promotion? We have artwork in the Lamar Library from last year for the, for the digital billboards. Do you just want me to have her change the date or do you and Chaz want to come up with a new layout? And get it um, to me. I believe Chaz is coming up with something new when I check today. He so gave me the 4th of July in the yeah, heart of the region. For the, for the uh, Juneteenth, I think that's coming up, so you okay. should get that soon. But yes, definitely would like, if you're able to okay. get yep. those up, we would love to have that. Okay. <clears throat> very good. Anything else, Ms. New? Oh, no, that's it. I'm Thank sorry. you Thank very you. much. Uh, moving on, I do want to uh, reinstate the uh, Dean and Barbara White Community Center Committee and I'm announcing that tonight. We had this committee in place before when the building was being uh, built and after it first opened, and then without a park director in place um, and issues going on there, I felt it was time to maybe reinstate this committee. Um, so Mr. Pettit will be the chair of that committee as he was in the past. And then for uh, other members on the committee, I'd like to appoint uh, Councillor Haynes Edwards and Councillor Hardaway. So Mr. Pettit, you are free to call your committees and uh, get moving on the large agenda we have before us. Okay. Okay. Moving on tonight to uh, Department and Commission reports, Lake County Solid Waste Management District, Mrs. Neal. Yes, thank you, President Bella. I was able to attend the Lake County 
um, solid waste management meeting last week. We went over a lot of information. Um, one of the things that they're looking for, they're looking for um, residents who would like to be a part of the citizen advisory committee. If you go onto their website, there's an application that you can actually fill out to be a part of. Um, they meet <clears throat> about three or four times a year. They're not extremely active at this point, and they're looking to become more active. So they're looking for residents who would love to be a part of the Citizens Advisory Committee. And once again, you can find these applications on the Lake County Solid Waste website. In addition to that, even though we have our own um, branch and leaf pickup, they do have an additional leaf drop-off that will take place from April 1st through May the 2nd. Those leaves can be dropped off at the Lake County Fairground. Um, they have a few stipulations. They have to be in brown biodegradable yard um, bags, and the uh, branches and twigs cannot exceed anything more than three inches. Um, they will also have a drop-off located, <coughs> excuse me, in Gary during those same dates at the Calumet Township um, Multiple Purpose Center, and it's on 1900 West 41st Avenue, and that's located in Gary. Um, so that gives you an additional place for people who are wanting to um, drop off their leaves. They also um, will have free compost for anyone who would like to receive compost. They are giving away a half of cubic yard to residents. If you are a business, they will charge you for it. But for residents, you can get a half a cubic yard. Um, if you guys are looking to plant flowers, Steve, we can get some of that, right, <laughs> for our flowers. <laughs> if you're looking to plant flowers, garden, you can get the compost. You can reach out to them at 219-853-2420, and you just let them know what day and time you can be out there, and you go out there and you just pick it up yourself. Um, they said most people bring pails, so just dump them in pails, and that's an easier way for them to actually kind of measure it out. And um, they also uh, just did a pickup for the household hazardous waste. It was in Crown Point on the 23rd. The next one will be April the 20th. And it's at the Munster Public Works on 508 Fisher Street in Munster, Indiana. So if you have any type of hazardous waste that you're still looking to get rid of while you're doing spring cleaning, <coughs> cleaning around the house, the garage, the attic, you have a place to take all of your hazardous waste. The next meeting is scheduled on May the 16th. Very good. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. Moving on to Northern Indiana Regional Planning Commission, Ms. Hardaway is our representative. Thank you, Mr. President. No report as our meeting will not be until next month. Very good. Moving on to the Fire Territory Board, Mrs. Neal and Ms. Hardaway. Fire Territory Board had a meeting recently, and we discussed the aerial truck. Um, the new board was appointed, and uh, we have a new president, which will be Stephen Minchuk. Uh, myself as vice president, uh, Ron Dudley as secretary, and then the others are just members. That is all for my report. Thank you. Before we move on to item F there, I want to announce that we'll probably have another uh, department or commission report added to the agenda, and that's actually going to be the Lake County um, Health Department. And the town of Merrillville um, being the top um, two population um, towns and cities in Lake County that doesn't have its own health board um, can appoint and uh, makes recommendations to appoint members to the board. And we're going to recommend um, uh, Ms. Chandler Felton as a, a master social worker for consideration to the board. I do know that Rhonda Neal has provided a name also that we're waiting to get um, their um, clearance on to appoint them or to recommend their name. So that'll be another, um, another board and commission that we can report on. And if somebody on our council serves I think that's just a nice feather in our cap. So uh, thank you, Leona, for uh, volunteering to, to present your name for consideration. Thank you. And we'll see You're how welcome. that goes. Thank, thank you. you. Moving on to department reports tonight, Chief Newsis. Thank you, Mr. President. 
I'm going to start off with just giving a little bit of a summary for March. We have had over 2,000 calls for service. Out of those calls we've had, or in addition to those calls, we'd have approximately 443 traffic stops, um, up to 64 arrests at this point as of uh, 10 o'clock this morning. So we've been fairly busy. Um, while I was doing some of my, putting my numbers together, I came across some statistics that we were doing our annual figures. And uh, this is something that I wanted to touch base with on everybody, <laughs> kind of give everybody a little bit of an insight as to what's been going on with the police department. Um, unfortunately, crime is like fashion and it constantly is trending. So there's different things that are going on throughout the times. Um, it goes in waves, right? Um, overall, the numbers have come down, but the seriousness of crime has increased. So as an example, before we used to have criminal mischief and crimes or thefts, those are very low severity crimes. There's not a lot of danger involved. There's not a, a lot of uh, danger to the community. And that time, that those types of crimes have changed. So right now, just as we're currently speaking, our detective bureau is working on cases that involve production of child pornography in Maryville. Um, we are having assaults with weapons. We are having criminal recklessness uh, assaults. Um, one of the newer ones, we have started seeing in a spike in undocumented migrants causing problems for us in the, in, the, in, in the area of thefts. They've been breaking into cars, they've been stealing stuff from stores. So that is something that we're currently working on as well. Also over the last year or so throughout Lake County, there has been a spike in um, meth, uh, methamphetamines, crack cocaine and heroin. So these are all new things that we're dealing with a lot more. Fire department's also dealing with a lot of the uh, overdoses of the heroin. And it's something that is new to us. So <clears throat> when I was afforded the opportunity to come in as a chief in 2023, I had this idea of what I wanted to do. And what I wanted to do was implement a, what I, I, I refer to as goal-oriented policing. And what that consists of is taking facts that we gather daily, that uh, patrol division gathers and gets spread out to the detective bureau. And it wasn't just simple investigations anymore. So we started looking at numbers differently. We started looking at the frequency of these types of crimes. We started looking at the areas. We started looking at the times. We started looking at associations. And looking at just bare numbers sometimes doesn't spell everything out. So the further we looked into this and the more layers we pulled back, we started finding out that we have some serious problems that we need to address. So as a result, we started taking some different measures as to how we're doing our policing. And due to those different measures, we've been able to identify more suspects. We've been able to have more arrests because of the identification of the suspects and the information that we were able to gather. And uh, we also found that there's a lot more sinister activity than we once believed. So these are all crimes that we have started looking into that we started getting in front of instead of being reactive or being proactive. Um, we're implementing things as simple as ordinances that can help us. Ordinances might sound like they're not a big deal, but they can when you have like a public nuisance ordinance or when you have some of these other ordinances where we can impound vehicles that park at certain areas. It's it's something that's going to be helping us dramatically because it's the little things. You take the little things away and then it doesn't allow them to build up. So um, one of the things that um, we also see now is we're getting a higher closure rate. We're getting a higher conviction rate in our cases when we charge. Our chargeable offenses are at over 90% right now. This is something that wasn't, it wasn't a reality in the past, but this is something that because of the way that we've been focusing on the new levels of communication within my staff and that's being passed down to everybody else, it's allowed us to do this. Um, we're preventing crimes, which is very important. And one of the things that I'm very proud of, we had the least amount of homicides in 2023 that we've had in the last eight years. So that's a huge, huge accomplishment, I feel. And uh, all these are due to, there's different areas. There's, there's guys that there's the patrol division. There are a lot more observant as to what's going on. Um, the Detective Bureau is working differently. We have officers that are in task forces. Um, 
there's at least three homicides that were prevented last year due to officers and task forces that were able to put together information and we happen to be at the right place at the right time where it prevented this from happening. So uh, these are all things that we want to do. We're going to continue to do. Um, and just uh, my goal is going to is going to be to have the least amount, if zero would be too many for me as far as homicides go. But this is something that we are actually really working on. I'm really proud of my police officers. I'm really proud of my patrol officers. I'm proud of my investigators. And I'm also proud of my administrative staff because I gave them my vision, I gave them my idea, and they've been putting it together, and it's working. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Keep up the good work. Thank you. <clears throat> well, Chief Urgris, since you're here, you might as well give your department report, unless you have anything else to add. All right. <laughs> What's going on in the fire department? <laughs> okay, well, some of the things we're working on at the fire station, I guess, or the fire department, I guess we can talk again about the bond. Uh, we are remodeling, or we're going to be going out for bid. We just secured the engineering and design work uh, to remodel this fire station on 57th Avenue so we can finally get a staffed engine up there. Right now there's currently just an ambulance, um, and that will be our next conversation to come. That's also in my five-year plan that was distributed to the, to the um, Public Safety Committee uh, in reference to help from the town uh, for some manpower in the future. Um, so that station is uh, hopefully will by the end of summer we could have some construction work going on there. Uh, we're building a uh, storage, maintenance, and a firefighter wellness center behind the station on, on 73rd Avenue. Uh, it's going to have a gym and other things for firefighter wellness. And what that building is going to allow us to do is, uh, thanks to our firemen and our uh, their knowledge on many things other than firefighting. We save countless of thousands of dollars on doing our, a lot of maintenance ourselves, sure. a lot of projects, a lot of, uh, for example, we're going to build this building. It's a pole <coughs> barn type building, pretty large, um, and we're going to build it out ourselves over the next couple years. Of course, following all the Sheila's codes, but uh, <laughs> it's going to save us. It's going to save us a ton of money. So, uh, I believe they've done nothing but um, surpass my goals for them, and they've grown into men and women that give back continuously, so uh, why not celebrate that? Why not give them the tools to do so, just that? Um, and outside of that, it's just the day-to-day -day grind, you know. Uh, calls are not, uh, they're not going down, they're going up every day. Yeah. Uh, the new South Fire Station will be another conversation that Councilman Pett and I, we can save that for another another time. That's a big one. Uh, that's a big one. If you <clears throat> don't worry, Ed, that's going to be done by the time I leave office. I guarantee yeah, you that. That's a good one, but it's sorely needed. Yep. And we, I could sit here and preach all day, but I won't. Um, but with that, uh, if there's any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them. Otherwise, that's my report. Chief, do you have a, a comment on the uh, um, Lake of the Four Seasons Fire Department not being able to get the votes to pass their fire territory? Did they talk to you about our territory and get some information? Yes, multiple times. I went okay. to multiple meetings. Uh, I'll give you my personal belief, and sure. I, I won't take just any curious. further than that. Um, without the town of Winfield involved, there's just it, it. I mean, it made sense to me, and I live out in that area. Uh, it made sense to me for, to raise the taxes for fire territory because I know what it did for Maryville, mm -hmm. um, and they were looking towards the future, uh, which they need to do. But without the town of Winfield and without their AV coming to the table, I think it was just a little out of reach for some of the Porter County residents where they were, were by the way, they haven't paid for fire protection ever, mm -hmm. <clears throat> similar to what Ross Township was here, unincorporated Ross Township. Right. They paid zero for fire protection. The town of Maryville flipped the bill. Um, I believe it's going to happen in the future, uh, but I think they need all three, all three entities involved. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving on tonight to Planning and Building Department, Ms. Sheila Shine. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to take the time to remind our residents and our business community of the importance of pulling a permit. Um, our fire inspector, our building inspector, and all of our inspectors out there inspected are finding people working without a permit. We've had calls where people are um, allowing people, giving people money, and then the contractor's not showing up. So it is very important that before you hire the contractor, you call our office and make sure that they're licensed and um, they've pulled the permit. 
Uh, this is important. This not only um, protects the town, but it protects you as a resident and a business owner. So please pull a permit when you're doing your spring jobs. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Street Department, Mr. King. So we've been, we've been busy. Um, we've had a branch crew out um, for the last, probably last, at least last month, um, picking up stragglers from last year. Also, you know, people got doing some yard work early this year, so we've been picking that stuff up. Um, uh, the beautification, uh, I know Tracy is working uh, really hard on pulling that all together. We've done some work here at Town Hall. We cleaned up the planters, planted some bushes up against the building. Um, the planters for the Dean and Barbara White Community Center have been ordered. I think they're scheduled to arrive uh, April 24th. I think the planters are coming. Um, and we'll start, they'll start planting here, um, uh, the planters in the beds, uh, the, you know, as soon as the weather gets uh, conducive enough to do so. Um, also, I want to point out, uh, we went through um, CPR training today. Um, we were one of the first group, well, for the first group to go. We had half of our department went today. Uh, the other half's going uh, next Friday, um, and we'll we'll be the first group to get that wrapped up. And hopefully, all departments I think are going to end up doing that. So, did you go to it too, Steve? I did. I was I was part of that group. I, Brenda was part of that group. Jerry was there. Okay. Kevin was there. So yeah. That's good to know because I almost had a heart attack tonight hearing what a fire truck costs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you see what that fire station cost? <laughs> no, 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 Ed. <laughs> Before we go to uh, Mr. Griffin's uh, <clears throat> town manager's report, I need to call out some police officers. Uh, Chief Costa Nuzes, Assistant Chief Josh Gonzalez, Corporal Allison Ellis, Detective Amanda Early, K-9 Officer Nick Wright, Officer Mark Novak, and Officer Jillian Evans, who all participated in the first ever women's self-defense course last Thursday night. Yeah. And uh, it was rather amazing to see almost 40 uh, residents there to learn uh, techniques. And, and Chief, I'll let you comment on it. It was actually uh, a really good uh, turnout. I was really happy the way that everything fell into place on it. Um, what we were essentially teaching is we're teaching women to have that extra chance to get away to survive. And uh, this is something that I would like to do more of. We are going to be hosting another one. I believe it's going to be August. So I know there was a lot of people that wanted to make it but couldn't because the class is filled up. So we are going to be hosting another one. And as I said, we're going to, as long as we can, we're going to try and continue to do at least one or two of these a year from here on out. But this is something that I feel is very important. I have a sister. I have a significant other. I have uh, um, you know, I have people that are close to me that are females, and at one point or another, they can be vulnerable. So we want to give them the tools that they can um, at least protect themselves long enough to get away or where somebody can hear them when they're screaming for help, and uh, it keeps them in the fight. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. And please pass along our uh, thanks to the officers. Thank you. Mr. Griffin. Mr. President, members of the council, Madam Acting Clerk Treasurer, it's my pleasure to talk to you tonight. I have presented to you on time uh, my report to you, and I do want to call your attention to a couple of things, if I may, Mr. President. Sure. Uh, you should read about the incredible work that Mr. Riley is doing as our media officer and our content officer for the unit. It's all there. In his words, I only take a little bit of liberties with it because I have a format I'm always going for. I also want to tell you about the Stormwater Management Department. I ask every department to give me three bullet points. Mr. Lake gives me multiple bullet points, and they're all worth reading, and I encourage you to do that, where he also talks about our tree city designation, which I'm very proud of. I also call your attention to human resources. Believe it or not, we're doing a benefits review, and we continue our search for the Parks and Recreation Director. I do want to continue to encourage you to read that. Also look at our Economic Development Department. There's probably facts in there that hadn't occurred to you that they do such a good job of trying to summarize what they do. I also encourage you to take a look at the Metropolitan Police Department, but it won't be nearly as good as the report we got tonight from the chief, and I thank him for that. In fact, I, I'm very proud and pleased with our public safety chiefs and the good work that they do to keep us all safe. And following the police department is the fire department's uh, report. 
I think it gave a summary that was important to have. I especially want to call your attention to the five-year plan. And if you didn't get a copy of it, our office can provide it for you or the chief's office can. It's quite readable um, and an econ uh, actually an example of an economy of expression. And the Parks and Recreation Department, Mr. President, members of the Council, Madam Acting Clerk Treasurer, I wrote that because it is a convention in most communities that have a city or town manager for that person to serve as the acting department head in the absence of the department head except for public safety. <coughs> so I've been doing that for a while. This time, when we got the word that we were not going to be accepted by the person to whom we made the offer, I started actually reporting to work at the Dean and Barbara White Community Center, which is the headquarters for Parks and Recreation. It's been illuminating. By the way, that office has a window. I just want to remind the council about that. I don't have one. I thought that I like that office. Anyway. Um, Get you a picture. It is quite he has two helpful. And I do find that being there has made me, just being a presence has helped the staff be able to respond to the things that they need to respond to. And I'm learning a great deal. And I'll be able to recommend to the appropriate committee some of the things that they need. And lastly, for my report, unless there's a question for me, Mr. President, members of the council, I do thank you for the reestablishment of the Dean and Barbara Wright uh, Community Center Committee. I had been trying to have a meeting with the Park Committee, not for any fault of the chair there, but my own, trying to kind of find time to do that. We do have a number of capital requests that I believe would be appropriate for one of the funds that you've established because of your forward thinking. And I'm not just blandishing you. I don't give financial compliments lightly. So take them in the spirit in which I offer them. You did a really wise thing. And we're going to need some of that. Uh, some of the needs are more time sensitive than others, but they're all, I believe, uh, prudent and wise. So I think the Dean and Barbara White Committee will be the one that will take that particular recommendation because it's not in the parks per se, but it does deal with <laughs> some physical plant needs there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm hopeful that that will be soon, uh, Mr. President, members of the council, member of the uh, chair of the committee, so that we can get those recommended and then we can advance the purchases. That does conclude my verbal summary of my written committee uh, report, which you, uh, excuse me, my written department head report, which you have. Absent a question, I'll be very pleased to be seated. Thank you, Michael. I thank you, Mr. President. Moving on tonight to general orders. First reading ordinance 24-05. <laughs> it's an ordinance of the town of Maryville, Lake County, Indiana, authorizing additional appropriations in the 2024 local roads and street fund. And it's my understanding that um, these are for already approved purchases of two pickup trucks in the amount of $95,300. <coughs> Two one-ton uh, dumpster trucks, forty-five thousand eight seventy-five. Eighteen street light poles, thirty-eight thousand dollars. Steve, people have actually knocked down eighteen street lights in accidents. Well, no, they've knocked down uh, fifteen, but we ordered three extras because. Okay. Um, Just in case. What are you guys doing? We are going to need them. Trend. Okay. We get a bulk discount then. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, <laughs> we do. Contractual services in the amount of uh, $50,000, and then uh, a tanker truck in the amount of 100000 that the department's trying to find a used one, I believe. So if you see there the uh, amounts listed, uh, they total $329,175. Trista, anything to add? <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. I will add quickly uh, on behalf of uh, Mr. King from conversation with him last week. Uh, I was initially a little bit shocked myself when I saw the email come through from uh, Ms. Matici about this additional appropriation and was a little concerned about dipping that deep into the cash balance that you see on your fund report. However, uh, in conversing them with Mr. Marco and Mr. King, they reminded me of several important things. Uh, some of which President Bella has commented on already today, that being that several of the items were ordered in 22 and in 23, never received by the town due to, as we know, the construction delays yeah. uh, of various vehicles. And several of these items on the list had also been put in an additional appropriation last year during 2023 for this same exact reason, um, again, the delayed production and, and receipt of the items, that money was not spent because the items were not received. So that cash stays in the fund for you to have available now for your use. 
Um, there were some street department vehicles included in the 21 and 22 bonds that were done as part of the capital equipment in your subseries Bs, meaning 2021B, 2022B of the bonds. <coughs> uh, due to the timing of delivery of some of those, the street department did adjust the list of items that they used that money for first. No matter which order they came in, for the $45,000 toward one of the one ton trucks um, would still have had to have been spent here separately outside the bonds. So that 45,000 portion was always a little bit extra beyond what the bonds uh, were going to cover for the equipment that the street department had used. So I did uh, talk with Mr. King and Mr. Markle about, again, that cash balance um, amount. They, of course, try to work within their budget as best they can. To that extent, they're requesting the $100,000 for that tanker truck so that it's kind of held on reserve. They're looking for one. They're looking for a used one in good quality. And if they find one cheaper than a new one uh, that is in good shape, they want to be able to jump on it quickly and be able to purchase it because you have already approved the money for it, as opposed to uh, asking the seller with a good deal to wait for our next council meeting and, and probably not want to do that and sell it to someone else. So there is a very real possibility that some of this cash, again, would not be spent yet this year, just as it had happened last year. Uh, and Steve and uh, Mr. K and Mr. Markle will continue to keep in touch with uh, Mr. Griffin and myself on the progress of these purchases. Any questions for Trista? Mr. King? Uh, I just want to make a comment about the tanker truck. Um, we use the tanker um, as part of our crack sealing, crack sealing operations as well as our brining operations in the winter. And we, um, the, the tanker we have now, I believe it's a 1982 model that was donated to the town and it's <coughs> Uh, it's not on its last, last, last leg, but it's pretty close, so that's why we're uh, reaching out. I, I reached out to Chief Yerga. Um, he's working with us on trying to find a used one from maybe a different department, and uh, hopefully we can do that. If not, we'll get a new one if we have to. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Trista or Stephen? I will entertain a motion for approval of ordinance number 24 05. Motion. Second. second. We have a motion by Ms. Hardaway and a second by Ms. Chandler Felton. Haynes Edwards. I'm sorry, Haynes Edwards. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Questions or comments on the motion? <coughs> Hearing none, Madam Clerk Treasurer, roll call, please. Vice President Neal. Yes. Councilwoman Haynes <coughs> Edwards. Aye. Councilwoman Chandler Felton. Aye. Councilwoman Uselat. Yes. Councilman Pettit. Yes. Councilwoman Hardaway. Aye. President Bella. Aye. Seven in favor. Seven in favor. Motion carries. Moving on tonight to Ordinance 24 06. Thank you, Trista. <laughs> Ordinance to the Town of Maryville, Lake County, Indiana, appropriating additional monies within the various Fire Protection Territory funds for the year 2024, not included in the current budget. These are appropriations for um, fire department repair parts, $65,000, and cumulative fire equipment building improvements, $100,000. The total amount is $165,000. Chair will entertain a motion. I'm sorry, guys. So moved. <laughs> Second. Second. Discussion. We have a motion from Mrs. Uh, Uslack, seconded by Ms. Hardaway or Ms. Haynes Edwards. No. I'm, oh, I'm going to recognize <laughs> Ms. Haynes Edwards. Second. Open for discussion. Hearing no discussion, we'll take a roll call, please. Vice President Neal. Yes. Councilwoman Haynes Edwards. Aye. Councilwoman <coughs> Chandler Felton. Aye. Councilwoman Uselak. Yes. Councilman Pettit. Yes. 
Councilwoman Hardaway. Aye. President Bella. Aye. Seven in favor. So that's six ayes and one yes. Was that seven? <laughs> <laughs> that still totals yeah, that to seven. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that motion carries. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we have no second reading ordinances tonight before us. We do have a, uh, and no resolutions. We do have a BZA and large gathering action. Uh, Ms. Shine, could you walk so, us through that, please? So will the petitioners please come to the podium, please? Ms. Song? Ms. Song. Good evening, guys. The applicant is King Song. The owner is Liberty Square, and they're requesting special exception approval for a massage therapy. Petitioner is requesting special exception approval to allow massage therapy. Petitioner has completed 1,000 hours of massage therapy training in Los Angeles, California. Petitioner has experience working with clients recovering from traumatic physical or emotional condition and those suffering from <coughs> degenerative wow, problems. This is the second location for the petitioner. Petitioner um, has her massage therapy license and she will be the only massage therapy in this location. Petitioner is aware of the state rules governing massage therapy and she is aware that she has to keep a client log. Tight massage therapy services include whole body massage from 30 minutes to one hour and 30 minutes. The hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week, and petitioner is aware of the camera ordinance. And this is for this petitioner only, at this location only, and for this use only. Where is the other location? Uh, the other location is in uh, AD805 in Annapolis, Highland. Oh, it's in Highland? It's in Highland, correct. Okay. Any other questions or comments for the petitioner? Yes. What are you charging for the massage therapy? Uh, so we have three options. There are 30 minutes for $50, 60, uh, like an hour for $80, $80, and 90 minutes is $120. Thank you. Mr. President, um, this is in, in my ward uh, down here on Broadway. Sheila, with regard to the license and the appointment book, do they give us a copy of that appointment book? You have a copy of her license, I see in the packet. Yes, but what they what that that has to be on display there. On display there. Right, and so if someone goes in, um, police officer or anyone goes in, they should be able to view that um, log. Okay. So is it only going to be one license? Well, no, I put it wrong. It's, as right now, we only have one at the moment, but we are looking further to, you know, advertise to looking for more um, masseuse to come in. And just as with salons and other businesses of that caliber, when you add another licensed person right. in, they have to bring that license in and put it on file at the clerk treasurer's That's office. Right. Yeah. We will. Okay. So will you only have three? Because you have three rooms? We have three rooms, yes. So you'll have three there. So we have, have we'll have three, three in the future, yes, correct. Well, yeah. that makes better sense for the hours, too. Otherwise, <coughs> one person's right, going to work right. every right. day of the week. Yeah, I'm going to write that was one. Okay, so are that you makes the sense. licensed therapist? No, she is. And your business hours are 10 a.m. to 10 p.m.? Uh, correct. It, on, uh, just on your application, it says foot massages, and then you said you're doing full body also? Well, I mean, uh, we put, as far as we were, we're thinking, uh, we put do, do actually for whole body massage. I'm, I'm, I'm actually putting wrong as why I'm foot because I actually have own a nail salon right next door to, and... What is the name of your nail salon? Um, it's a nail love. It's really right down the street right here at 8094, and... Uh, as I'm typing and helping her out, I don't know. I put foot massage in my mind. I don't know why I put as foot so massage. A it's, it's a mistake, yes. Yeah, hmm. That was brought up in the BZA meeting that, that was on the application. Um, 
I can't alter the application, but Mr. President, they did ask, I can't cross out or alter the application, but they did ask about the foot massage being on there. Yes, it, it will have, I mean, the, it will have, there are options that, you know, the, the, um, the, the client will uh, let us know where, if they want just foot massage only, and, or like they, um, you know, have whole body massage. So there are many options when we come up with the menu. So would the Services. foot massage be $50 too? Um, with I, the think ma I, I would think <coughs> it would be cheaper than the whole body massage. And I think my last question is, I see you have the three rooms, a laundry room and a resting area and one rest room. You don't have a dressing room for uh, well, they will have a privacy as, you know, for the room, the massage room, if they will have, you know, they could, under, we will leave the room, leave them type privacy for them to undress and, uh, you know, they will be have a cover with a towel before we come in. Ms. Shine, did we talk to anybody in the town of Highland? Uh, yes, I called the town of Highland and also at the BZA meeting, um, Mr. David Streeter was also here. He owns the plaza over there, and he was also here, and he had went and uh, before he let them have an intent to come to check on him. Were, were there any other remonstrators, Sheila? No. Um, to Joe, uh, if I make a motion to approve, Joe, can we have, can I put a condition of a six-month review on it now? Put, or put a reasonable condition, sure. Okay. I guess with the questions I'm hearing from my fellow counselors um, and the fact that the, the building owner was there, um, I, I just like to see how this goes. Uh, I'm not necessarily opposed to it, but. Uh, Do you want a six month condition, a year condition or six month and year? I mean, every every six months. For, yeah, six, six in a year, six in a year. It'll help him up, help verbalize that for me. Sure. Uh, Councilor Pettit makes a motion that uh, can, approval is contingent tonight upon a six month and 12 month uh, review of how business is being conducted at Liberty Square. And that would include both planning and building and with the chief of police. Okay. okay. Is, that, is that acceptable, chief? I mean, is that you and Sheila? Yes. Um, yes. And the, the fire inspector normally goes out to make sure also that um, to check on businesses of this caliber to make sure okay. that, no, we've had issues in the past, Mr. President, where people were staying in the back of the um, mm -hmm. businesses. Yep. So the fire inspector goes out and inspects to make sure that they're not beds and those kind of things in the rear of the property. So we could um, do a six months and a 12 months checkup. Okay. Mr. Pettit, would you please put the address in there? I, I agree with... Uh, 7890 7890 Broadway. Right. Okay. For this petitioner at this location. For this petitioner at this location, only for this use only. Yeah. We have a motion by Mr. Pettit. Is there a second? I second. Second. <laughs> second. All three of them. Everybody, Everybody second. second. Everybody second. Everybody second. <laughs> the left side of the dais. Oh, my goodness. They want to come in and get a massage. I <laughs> yeah. Chair's going to recognize Mrs. Neal as a second. <laughs> <clears throat> Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Thank Congratulations. Thank you so much. Have a good night, guys. I have no old business before us tonight. Is there any new business? Hearing none, public comment. Open for public comment. Please come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and we allow three minutes for your comment. Good evening, Shonda Flowers, uh, 6137, Connecticut Street, Miraville, Indiana. Um, just based off of the last question, I'd also like to ask if there's a possibility that when it comes to businesses, 
um, that maybe there's something that can be incorporated currently with ordinances. We have a lot of um, tickets in the court that are outstanding. Um, false alarm tickets, I know in one of our previous department head meetings, I think um, we know that false alarms are still happening, although we're not really seeing those tickets. But what we've had in the past with regards to people who have owed the court where we used to can suspend the licenses for it, we do have a substantial amount of business tickets that may have had false alarms, dwellings, and those things have not been able to be collected on if there's something possible that you can do or entertain the possibility of when a business is coming, if they have outstanding tickets, that before their business license is issued, that you would consider making sure that they pay that money for ordinances and tickets that may have been written via <coughs> fire inspectors or even um, the, the police department themselves regarding false alarms. If you can put something in place for those businesses to maybe get a stamp from the court that they do not owe and have any outstanding collections on old ordinances. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening, uh, DeAndre Evans, 7774 Virginia Place, Maryville, Indiana. Um, I'm not much of a public speaker. Um, I'm a coach, I'm a father, and I'm a resident of this community. And um, there are no basketball opportunities for these children at all anywhere in the town. Um, the community center does have an open gym, but um, it's closing at 2, 2.30 every day when my children are in school. Um, none of the parks in any of the communities have anything for these kids who want to get outside and actually play basketball. I'm looking at the time capsule here. And I'm and I'm looking at a ball like and we have a court at the house, and from but it's it's just not the same. And I um, I understand the elephant in the room when we're talking about bringing basketball courts in the parks and outside <laughs> elements. But uh, I just think that there's something that we can do on that front. Um, I know you know I don't want to take up a lot of you all's time, but something for the council to think about. Sure, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Mr. Pettit, let's add that to your agenda for your first meeting, please. Is there any other public comment? Uh, seeing none, announcements. We have uh, a bad and blighted committee meeting April 2nd at 5.30. The plan commission workshop is April 2nd at 6.30. Nope. It's not? There's no, there's no, no plan. workshop. No. 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 Can't. There, is, there is no plan commission workshop. Thank you. Right, Sheila? Okay. No. The next town council meeting is April 9th at 6.30, and Mr. Pettit announced his 5 p.m. April 2nd committee meeting for council affairs to review town ordinances. Anything else before us, guys? Entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.